guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today it is my favorite time of the month where I can unbox my many, many boxes um, that I've, I've got for the month. These are going to be my September unboxings. So let me resituate this and we will start opening them. So let's start with Owl Crate because look at their new packaging. They finally rebranded. I guess they're going to get like a new logo and everything because they've been going strong for a while and have had the same lo like logo packaging from the start. So they're finally switching it up a bit, which I think is cool. All right, so the adult September theme was Follow the Breadcrumbs. This is their adult fantasy. Ooh, okay, this looks cute. I've not heard of this book. So this is After the Forest by Kel Woods. Look how cute this cover is. The back says, you cannot keep a witch from her nature. Sooner or later, it will bite back. Okay. Oh, this art style is so cute. Ooh, interesting green. Leaf that's green, earth and air, protect me, forest, fair. Darkness, devil, death, and fear. Get, their, get thee gone from here. Okay. <laughs> it's fun little art. On the op on the reverse dust jacket side they look so sad okay so this says 20 years after the witch in the gingerbread house Greta oh, wait <laughs> okay I I was not prepared for this okay 20 years after the witch in the gingerbread house Greta and Han Hans are struggling to get by their mother and stepmother are long dead Hans is deeply in debt from gambling and the countryside lies in ruin it's people starving in the aftermath of a brutal war Greta has a secret, though. The witch's grimoire, hidden away and whispering in the Greta's ear for the past two decades, and the recipes inside that make the best gingerbread you've ever tasted. As long as she can bake, Greta can keep her small family afloat. But in a village full of superstition, Greta and her mysterious addictive gingerbread, never not to mention the rumors about her childhood misadventures, are a source of gossip, gossip and suspicion. Now the dark magic is returning to the woods, and Greta's magic, magic she is still trying to understand, may be the only thing that can save her, if it doesn't kill her first. After the Forest is a dark, enchanting fantasy debut from Kel Woods that explores the repercussions of a childhood filled with magic and a young woman contending with the truth of happily ever after. How interesting. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like it's going to be on the more cozy side of fantasy, but still like darker elements. I'm definitely intrigued. I think this is a beautiful cover, so that does make me happy, but I I was truly not expecting that. I'm interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, now we can jump into the young adult box. This month's theme is Drown Your Secrets, the young adult. I have a pretty strong feeling I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I know what book this is going to be, but I'm incredibly excited for it, so I don't mind at all. So of course, first things first, the Treasured Tomes. This is inspired by Babel. Oh cute, with the little Babel Tower. An act of translation is an act of betrayal. Oh, this one's cute. See, I've read this, so I feel like I'm just a little bit cooler, but I do like these pins. I think they're some of my favorites that we've gotten. I love how they open. Okay, the next thing in here I see is a little contraption. It's magnetic. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to pretend I know what this is. I have no idea what this says, but I like the little moth on the back. What is this? <laughs> Prepared to look good anywhere with this lipstick case designed by The Bitter Season. This case is a perfect for keeping your lipstick for touch-ups with, or anything else you might need for your convenience. It's inspired by The Whispering Dark. Interesting. I don't think I, this is something that I'll personally get a lot of use out of. I do not bring makeup with me when I'm out and about. I don't touch up my makeup when I go out. So, not something that I would necessarily use, but it's a cute design. Next, we've got some tea. This is the Boldlian Library Tea. This is an English breakfast cream in chamomile. Yeah, so this is inspired by a discovery of witches. I don't drink tea, though, so I... We'll pass this off to my boyfriend if he wants it. Um, but yeah, I'm not a tea drinker, which is so unfortunate. If they could give us, like, hot cocoa packets, that's what I want. <laughs> Alright, next up, I think this is just a little tote bag. Oh, 
with a very cute little skull guy. This is inspired by... Okay, so it's just a little bag with plastic lining, though. Start off this Dark Academia season with our corduroy bag designed by the Pearl Dreer. This bag will take you through the halls of Dalloway School in A Lesson in Vengeance. Interesting. So, it's plastic on the inside, but it's got pockets, a little magnet to keep it shut. The outside is very cute. I really like this bag. I don't know how I feel about like the lining being plastic, but it is what it is. Okay, next up, it looks like we've got the next in the book journal collection. This says, Gods of Our Own Universes. A little sword. The back says, The problem with knowledge is it's inexhaustible craving. So, it is just a dotted journal, but the you can take out the paper and it's just a case at that point. Um, it's got the little sword eye at the bottom, so this is probably inspired by the Atlas Six. So yeah, this is the third one. It is, yep, the Atlas Six, and it's designed by At Lichen and Limestone. So, I really like these. I think that they're very pretty. I don't have a use for them just yet, but I know when I do, it'll be so worth it. It'll be so good. And then, of course, we've got the book, which is exactly what I thought it would be. It's A Study in Drowning. This has been an anticipated release of mine. Um, this is by Ava Reed. Oh, look how cute they are. Oh, yes. Oh, this was the right choice. I love a beautiful naked hardback. Like, this is my favorite thing. And it being the original cover. Oh, I was a girl when he came for me. Beautiful and te treacherous. And I was a crown of pale gold in his black hair. This is maybe one of my most anticipated releases. Of course, we've got the reverse dust jacket. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so so ready to fall in love with these characters. I just, oh, I feel it in my bones. The only enemy is the sea. Oh, okay. Let me read this for you. Effie Sayer has always believed in fairy tales. She had no choice. Since childhood, she's been haunted by visions of the fairy king. She's found solace only in the pages of Anglehard? Emery's Mildred's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. Effie's tattered copy is all that's keeping her afloat through her first term at the prestigious Lyrian Architectural College. Architecture College. So when Madrun's family announces a contest to redesign the late Arthur author's estate, Effie feels certain that this is her destiny. But Hirith Manor is an impossible task. A musty, decrepit house on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. But when Evie arrives, someone else has already made a temporary home there. Preston Hellery, a stodgy young literature scholar, is determined to prove Evie's favorite author is a fraud. As the two rival students investigate the reclusive author's legacy, piecing together clues through his lectures, through his letters, books, and diaries, they discover that the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. There are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. Ah, I'm so excited. I just, I don't know, this just like really screams to me. It's really just giving me all the vibes. I think that this cover, although wouldn't be my first choice because it doesn't, like it fits the synopsis, but it doesn't fit the vibes of the marketing, but it is beautiful. So I will not complain. I'm obsessed. I cannot wait to finally read this. It's definitely one that I plan to read this month, like as soon as I can. Next up, we've got Fairy Loot Adult, and the theme for this month is Beneath the Mask. Okay, we've got Magenta Edges, and ooh, this art is so fun. And then of course we have the letter on the back. So this is Son of Blood and Ruin by Marilee Lares. Oh my god, look at that little parrot. Uh, it's not a parrot. Don't yell at me. I don't know my birds. Um, on the back it says, What is this I hear about masked, a masked vigilant who calls herself Pantera? They say she's the finest swordswoman in the new world, that she is a witch, and that she will be the end of us all. God, I can't get over these sprayed edges. That, the, ah. So cool. Okay. Very subtle but pretty. End pages. Ooh. Fun very metallic. 
Ooh, this artwork is so pretty. The reverse dust jacket. I like them. Okay, I'm gonna butcher some pronunciations. Bear with me. The Empire of Moctezuma II has fallen, has long fallen, a city raised on the bones of Tenochtitlan. None dare whisper the names of their gods or speak of the magic that once graced the lands, of the witches who hunted jaguars, the warriors who soared with as eagles, until a new name emerges, a curse on the lips of the Spanish, a hero in the hearts of the people, a masked vigilant, a sorceress with a blade, Pantera. But that is not her only name. To all who know her, Lenora de la Casa Tlan... Oh god, I'm so sorry. Is a glitter jewel of court promised to the heir of the Spanish throne. The respectable Lady Lenora faints at the sight of blood and, and would sooner be caught dead than wield a sword. Even against the dauntless thief with a cunning smile, no one suspects that Lenora and Pantera are one and the same. Lenora has fooled them all, and with the magic of her ancestors running through her veins, she is nearly she is nearly invincible until an ancient prophecy of destruction threatens and she is forced to decide surrender the mask of her life but the legendary pantera is is destined for more than an early grave and when she discovers the truth of her origins not even death will stop her this is not a book that i have actually heard of um this is the first of me knowing of its existence and i'm pretty excited i it's intriguing to me it's not a plot that I typically pick up in my fantasy so it's definitely one that I think I could have a lot of fun with and just like the Spanish style I'm so intrigued I'm really into it all right now into the young adult fairy loot I see a blanket oh my god okay so this month's theme is invisible truths blankets so of course the first thing that I see is as Chavar's blanket uh, inspired by a darker shade of magic by B.E. Schwab please let me in I love their blankets so much oh my god ta-da is it cool I can't see it so it looks like you've got each of the Londons it's all right this is not a series that I personally like love so it's definitely not a series that I'm like jumping for joy over but I have these blankets literally scattered across this room I do really like them so I can't complain too much blankets are blankets okay next up I'm seeing some travel bottles <laughs> interesting okay da -da -da, travel bottles inspired by fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros interesting <laughs> It is funny. When I say, like, I want fourth wing fandom art, fandom items, etc., travel bottles were not really what I considered. And I'm one of those annoying people that's like, I always want things that are practical, things that I can use in my daily life. Yes, these are practical, but I'm rarely going to use these, if ever, which is much more of a me problem. But the art is pretty, but the art is pretty at least. Okay, next up I see one more chapter, Reading Light. Ooh. <gasps> I've always wanted one of these. Oh my god. Ah! How do I? Oh, I have to put batteries in it? Ugh, how rude. But this is so cool. Okay, so it's like, you put it in your book, and then it like will light up, and then like you can read the things on the page under it. I, I don't know how practical this is. I don't know how like often I'll reach for one of these to grab to read with but I've seen these before like around on the internet and I've always wanted one because I just think that they're so cool um again practical I don't know but I'm definitely going to give it a try at some point and I'm happy about it so all right next up is a pin I have this pin this is the same pin that I got last month same like packaging and everything um yeah so this is a raven cycle pin which is what i assumed last time i opened it but the spoiler card said something different so i don't know what happened there i'm not gonna worry about it i didn't get last month's pin you've seen this already moving on Ooh, red rising foiled bookmarks oh my god my friends are gonna be so jealous of me 
Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, I love them. Ah! <laughs> these are so good. Oh my God. These are my favorite bookmarks to ever exist. I have never loved bookmarks so much in my entire life. Even the back with a little, oh my God. I'm obsessed with these. <sighs> okay. I don't care how bad fairy loot's done. Um, that's my favorite thing ever. Okay, next up is the tarot cards for the month. These are cute. We've got Addie as the Ace of Moons and Luke as the Two of Moons cards. These are inspired by The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Interesting, interesting. I'm gonna be honest, not my favorite character art I've ever seen, but cool. All right, and then finally we've got the book. We've got some black sprayed edges. Okay. Autumn Fall High School Boy Swim Team. Oh no. So we've got the character art, which is pretty cute. And then the, of course, author letter on the back. So this is If I Have to Be Haunted. Oh my god. Okay. By Miranda Sun. Your first love will always haunt you. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous edges. So the back says, I'll haunt you for the rest of your life. You wouldn't dare try me. <gasps> Ooh. Very cute end pages. Just very simple, but very cute and like whimsical. So the dust jacket is kind of similar art style to the print and same color patterns. I love this though. Oh my God. Um, this feels like it's going to be sad. Why? So she's dating her first love, who's also a ghost. Um, okay. Kara's just trying to stay on top of her classes, excel at her extracurriculars, and and prepare for college, which means not speaking to the dead, an ability she's inherited from her grandmother. Ghosts are trouble, and Kara doesn't need to add their problems to her own. But then she stumbles upon the body of Zach, a super popular boy, nope, a super popular but very newly dead high school golden boy, in the woods, and guess what? He wants her to resurrect him. Cue trouble. Miranda Sun's debut touches on the power and conflicts of mother-daughter's love, first romance, and finding your place in the world while hindering your culture. Full of heart, humor, and thrills, if I have to be haunted, we'll put a spell on you. Oh, how cute! This feels very out of, like, this feels like something more Owl Crate would do rather than Fairy Loop, but I'm pretty intrigued. I think this could be really cute. I'm just, I don't know. Their romance? I, just, I think I'm just in the mood for romance. I think that's what we're learning today. So, that is it for fairy loot. Um, not too bad. Absolutely love and adore those bookmarks. Alright, and then last, but certainly not least, we've got a Lumicrate. Ta-da! So, this month's theme, or last month's theme, was my last breath. Alright, the first thing that I see is a completely unmarked box. So it looks like we've got another one of those planter boxes. Oh cute! <laughs> so this is a tale of gothic romance. It's pink with like little gothic symbols. Love stories that will haunt your dreams. This is so cute! Oh my gosh! Out of the couple that I have, this one's definitely my favorite so far. She's just so cute! Alright, the next thing I see in here is enamel magnet. Inspired by Belladonna by Adeline Grace. So this is In the Window, Kissed by Death. And it's just, I guess, a little magnet. Very pretty, though. Well, with a little death in the background. How cute. Oh, I love him. Okay, next thing I see. I think this is one of those bowl warmers. Yes. Where you, like, put your bowl when it's hot with soup or whatever in here. And you can, like, do it on either side. These really do come in handy. They are so helpful. Um, this one's just like a very <clears throat> simple pattern. Let me look. So this is the Botanical Bloom Bowl Cozy, um, inspired by Mexican Gothic. Ooh, that's on my TBR this month. And you know, that fits the vibes. I think that checks out quite well. All right, the next thing I see is Piece Your Own Stories If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Uh, is this a puzzle? <laughs> it is a puzzle! Oh, how cute! Will I ever do this? Probably not. But do I love If We Were Villains? So much. So, so much. Um, so even if I never read this, this is great decor. Just a cute little book. 
And if I ever get bored, I can do the puzzle inside. I'm not a puzzle girly. I know a lot of booktubers are. I like puzzles. I just, I get bored halfway. Um, and if I don't finish it, I'll never finish it. And I'm not the type of person to like hang them on my walls. But this alone is cute decor, so I'm not upset about it. And then finally, we have the book, which I'm a little surprised by. So here we have another copy of A Study in Drowning. Very different cover design. Oh, weird. And it has on the back the like author's, what do we call those? Blurbs? Author blurbs, which is not normal for my book boxes. But there is Erin A. Craig, who I love and adore. So these stencil edges are fun. Oh, cute little character art. Same on both sides. Oh my god. Ah! This is the most beautiful hardback I've ever seen in my whole goddamn life. Oh my god, she's so pretty. I'm obsessed with this. This is like my favorite ever. Oh my god, it's so cool. This is the most dark academia hardback I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow. Ah, oh, this is so cool. I am so easily satisfied. So as I had already stated, this is a book that I'm very eager to get to and plan to read. I think I'm buddy reading this with Eliza sometime this month, so it'll be read. I'm excited. This is so pretty. I, wonderful job. Oh, wonderful job. I cannot wait. I have very high hopes. This feels like it could potentially be the next Divine Rivals. They just kind of feel like they're in the same league. Even though I didn't love Divine Rivals as much as the most mass readers did. Um, this definitely feels like it could be in like the same, same vibe of loving the romance, you know? I hope that makes some sense. My brain is not fully there. But that is going to be it for this video. Loved those Red Rising bookmarks so much. Love the books. I'm so excited to read these. They're definitely not what I was expecting to get. Um, I knew that A Study in Drowning was going to be at least one of these, but I didn't know, I had like no suspicions for the others. So I'm pretty amazed, pretty impressed. I'm pleased. Um, but I'm gonna go now <laughs> because I'm still sick if you can't tell and the amount of coughs that I'm gonna have to edit out is really um, unfortunate for me. So I hope that my voice doesn't bother you too much. I hope that you enjoyed this very quick video, quick unboxing. Let me know if you're gonna get to any of these books or if any of them are now on your radar and sound intriguing. I'm definitely most intrigued by the book that I've never heard of, After the Forest. This one just sounds like a very fun autumnal time. So maybe like next month I'll pick it up. We'll see. But I'll of course keep you guys updated whenever I do. So thanks for hanging out with me. I don't know what day of Booktober this is, but I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>